data set is a solution um, to the problem of working with large structured um, data sets in the Wolfram language. Um, and the reason we need this is because it can be unwieldy to work with large data if what you're looking at is just raw lists and associations and, and values. Um, so there are many problems with, with doing it with just raw data. Um, one problem is that it's too large to display all of the data in your notebook, and it can slow your notebook down to have a lot of data present. Um, another is that it can be hard to reason about how operations will um, work on complicated nested um, data sets. And if something goes wrong, it can be hard to understand why it's gone wrong. So a data set aims to solve that. Um, so the way it solves the display problem is by looking at the structure of your data and choosing an appropriate sort of formatting representation for that data. So here I have a data set of passengers on the um, Titanic, um, and it's showing the information about each passenger nicely in rows and columns. And we can see that there's a lot of data there. So again, um, large amounts of data won't become unwieldy to deal with in the sort of notebook interface. Um, it also solves the problem of working with data by giving you a flexible query uh, syntax that's based on part specifications. Um, so if you take the core ideas of part and sort of extend them in, in somewhat natural ways, then you get a flexible way of dealing with and transforming um, complicated data sets. And then it solves the last problem by giving you a bit of a helping hand, uh, preventing you from shooting yourself in the foot, so to speak. If you do things that are impossible or unlikely to work, then it will give you a kind of nice symbolic failure instead of generating tons of messages and giving you a partially symbolic result. So a quick prelude to this is to um, think about how we represent data in the Wolfram language. Um, and the core way that that's done is with combinations of, of lists and associations. So of course, before we had associations, people uh, mainly used lists of rules. Um, but now, of course, we have this association data structure. So the main way that we use lists is, of course, just to store lists of values. But there's another way we use lists, too, which is a kind of a way of grouping together two values. So an example of where that happens is if you use something like tally, which is, of course, my name, but it's also a function in the mathematical language. If you write tally, it gives you back um, a list of values, and each inner list has just two elements. The first is the value, and the second is the count of that value in the original list. Um, associations have a, a somewhat symmetric kind of use. Um, people can use them to store, um, obviously, keys and values, but specifically where the keys are kind of, could be any number of keys and values, and the keys are all the same, and the values are all the same. So here we have names associated with some, some particular property. It might be age. But another way that's quite different that people use associations is to uh, represent a kind of a record or um, a structure in which we have different a fixed number of, uh, of keys and a fixed of values that can be of different types. You know, Bob and age are just very different things. Um, so with data set, um, we can combine all these ingredients to produce arbitrarily hierarchical structured data sets. Um, and I'll show you some examples of the kind of shapes that can occur. Um, so here's a, a, a data set that you saw a little bit of before. Um, here's what happens when you put it in a data set. And here's the kind of underlying data if you want to think about um, what, what it actually looks like in Mathematica. Um, so you can see that we have a list of associations. The keys are all the same. Um, we have each uh, row here is represented by a single association. And uh, uh, the keys correspond to the columns of this, of this table. So I've written that here. Each observation is represented by an association. Um, each key in the association corresponds to a column. You can easily map and select things uh, using syntax that I'll show you in a moment. And of course, you can extract individual rows to get at single records. So if you take first of this data set, you'll see a particular association like up there. Um, but then there's a, a sort of slightly uh, more complicated variant of that idea where we don't have a list of associations. We have an association of associations. Um, so here, the example I'm using is a very simple data set that describes planets in the solar system. And we have, you can kind of think of this as a labeled table, an index table, where each row has a label associated with it. So here we have Mercury, Venus, Earth. And then we have, again, the columns that are all the same, mass and, and radius. Those are the properties that each of those uh, rows has. Um, and of course, you can see um, that each observation is no longer just an association. It's kind of a rule. 
there's the label, and then there's the, 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 the kind of uh, struct. Um, and you can do simple lookups of this, of course, just like Constantine showed you in the previous talk. Um, but an important thing to realize is that these keys are preserved. When you do operations like sorting, selecting rows that have particular properties, the keys come along for the ride, which makes it quite, um, quite useful in a variety of contexts. Um, then let's look at a last kind of uh, table that's also fairly common and maybe was more common um, before the, the days of association. And that is where uh, you have a table whose uh, rows are not labeled at all. So we don't have any column names. We just have uh, lists. So this is um, soccer matches from the 2014 World Cup. And we have a team and another team and a score represented as a list. And you can see here that we're not naming um, the first team and the second team. It's just a, a list of lists. Um, now, what are the ways that you can construct data sets? Well, the first way is you can construct them from raw data using the data set function. So here I'm building a list of associations using a table. I've got 100 integers. For each one, I'm creating um, a column called n. That's just the integer. And then it's square, and then whether it's prime or not. And you can see that that's formatting as that, as that data set object there. You can also use um, files. You can import files. Um, Jeremy mentioned this using the semantic import function. So here's a, a raw file that's from our example data. It consists of countries and kind of dollar quantities. And semantic import will import that. It will recognize uh, the countries and the dollar quantities and preserve the semantics of those things. So you can work with them with Wolfram language. And it will also detect the, the column headers. And those will come along for the ride. And those will end up being um, columns in the resulting data set. And there's one last way that um, we're going to hopefully be expanding in the future. And that is um, the entity value function can return a data set directly. So here I have uh, entity value of countries in Europe. And I'm extracting three properties, GDP population and country code. And I'm asking, using the third argument to entity value, I'm asking for the result as a, a data set rather than as a list of associations. And here you can see that we've got nice uh, one uh, example is of the, sh the particular shape here is a, is a labeled table, an index table that I mentioned earlier. So the rows are labeled by the country, and the columns are uh, GDP population, country code there. Um, OK, so now we have data sets. How do we do interesting things with them? Well, I mentioned that data sets query syntax builds on top of uh, the kind of conventions that are used by the part function. So um, if you've used part before, then this kind of syntax might be familiar. Um, here we're asking for all of the passengers of the, the Titanic, but specifically we're getting the ages, and we're ignoring all of the properties of those passengers. Um, but we can also um, include uh, a new kind of construct in the language called an operator, or an op operator form. And operators represent operations that haven't executed yet. So here we're going to not get all the passengers, but merely those passengers who satisfy a predicate. And the predicate here is that their age is greater than 30. And then once we've extracted those, we're going to um, get the pro uh, survived property from each of those, which will be true or false. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about operators. They're new in Mathematica 10. Uh, they're based on many existing functions. They're a slightly different form of existing functions. And the core property they have is that they represent an operation that hasn't been performed yet. So in a sense, they're kind of like verbs. Um, you can think of them sort of uh, as sort of representing the idea of selection rather than performing a selection, which would be the two-argument form of select. So here we have um, uh, an operator form, and here we have an operator form actually being applied to a list and then evaluating. So I mentioned that a lot of functions support this. This isn't a complete list, but you can, you can see many examples in the dataset documentation. And there's a guide page specifically about operator forms. If you search for that, you'll find that. Um, the core idea, though, is that they, they allow us to describe what to do at a given level of a data set. So here's an example data set. This is the underlying raw Mathematica form of um, uh, the Titanic data set. So we have a list of associations. Each association represents a passenger, age, sex, and whether they survived or not. And I've color coded this, um, this input form with uh, colors representing which level these various expressions occur at. So the outermost level is level one. That's the list level. And level two is an association level. And level three is the actual data, 52, F, true, and so on. And so here's what queries do. Um, you can see that each successive argument to the data set, the, qu the query that we're writing, corresponds to one of these 
these levels on the original data. So we're asking for all the ages. All means everything at level one. And then at level two, we're going to select the age uh, field. Um, here we, um, that's parts specification. I mean, that's just ordinary parts specification. But this is more sophisticated. This is a, a, um, something a part can't do. Here we're applying a function round to the actual data. And, um, and then here's a different example where we are selecting at the, at the top level, we're only getting those rows for which survived is true. And for those rows, we're getting ages. That's a very, very kind of uh, lightweight introduction to query uh, syntax. There's a lot more to explore there, including grouping, arbitrary hierarchies. Um, there's this notion of ascending and descending operators that's uh, somewhat subtle. And I encourage you to dive into the documentation of data set to see many, many more examples. Um, in fact, if we go there now, um, hopefully we can see. Uh, I'll just very briefly squeeze through so we can take a look at what's there. Um, so there are examples of different shapes. Here's the Titanic data set, various kinds of operations you can do on that. Um, then there's uh, the planets in the solar system, but this is a bit richer because there's more structure, there's an extra moons field that is yet again another kind of, um, you know, contains more uh, substructure to it. So you can drill into it in different ways. Um, and then the last example is of um, pure hierarchical data. So this is not um, something you'd, you'd see in a SQL database. This is kind of uh, more hierarchical in, in nature. And you can kind of drill down into it in similarly sort of flexible general way. So that about covers what I wanted to talk about. It. Um, there's a lot to explore, so I encourage you to read the documentation. You can also ask questions of me on community.orphan.com and on mathematica.stackexchange.com.